Hey, I'm Chad Tomaszewski with TSI Today. We are here in Calgary on set at the Fortinet Cup, uh, the Tour Championship for Canadian PGA. I have some experts in the cybersecurity field that are going to be joining me today around our round table. You don't want to miss this. I'm Chad Tomaszewski, Chief Growth Officer with Triton Communications. We're talking to industry leaders about the technology that's changing their business. This is TSI Today. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, here at our round table, we actually grabbed it from our studio. We thought that it was kind of a staple, um, our, our whiskey barrel. I think today it's uh, more fitting given the topic. This is a bit more of a powder cake. Um, so many things going on in the cyber world right now. And, uh, you know, um, I, I don't even know where to start. Uh, we have to do a better job as a country, uh, as organizations, to protect not only our data, but our employees' data. Um, I think that's super, super important. And that's why I asked you guys here to join me today. Um, Matt, one of the questions that we talked about previously was the repercussions and the amount of businesses that have actually shut their doors as a result of a cyber attack. And you told me 10%, I can tell you, I just about fell off my chair. Um, these numbers are staggering. What could we be doing better in terms of policies or awareness what could be different <laughs> um, so I, so I build compliance programs basically right so um, and I and I talk with these businesses throughout Canada all the time and it's obvious that we need to create awareness I think a lot of that can start with the government um, when the government looks at like security and trying to force that on Canadian businesses it's really it's, they're really in a tough spot they can't come in and say you need to use this product you need to do this 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 and this to be just to, to be safe so that we can save our economy all this money um, but what they can do is they can come in and say you're responsible for keeping people's data safe you're responsible for keeping Canadians information private I agree 100%. You know, a lot of that starts, guys, with is really with hardware. You know, some of the hardware you guys are providing. So, what are some of the, you know, the beginning steps of an organization today that they should be taking into consideration in terms of, you know, the proper firewall or switch gear, or even the Wi-Fi access points to make sure that we're using the right product. Well, to build on on Matt's point, you know, I think uh, as the channel manager for Western Canada, really, it's enabling folks like you. Right, with our, some of our solution sets. So that would be starting with some, something like Zero Trust, right? Um, I call it the trifecta, the gates, the switches, and the APs. Those are kind of the starting points from a hardware perspective, right? Um, and that's what we're known for. But we have 50 plus products. You know, like you were talking about businesses, like how do they keep safe? We've got a product called um, Deceptor that is kind of like a honeypot, right? So it's, it, it's, it's really important and you, you built on the, what I would call the cyber, cyber, insur cyber insurance, right? Um, you know, you got to do all this from a government perspective to be able to afford your insurance, right? From a ransomware perspective. Fortinet really provides that backbone for all of that from an infrastructure perspective, but also, in my opinion, um, like Jeff's our OT specialist, um, from a solution set as well. And, and that's really what we're trying to do. And it's enabling folks like yourself. Oh, well, you know, try to love solutions. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> some of the things that we can do on the ethical hacking side, um, I'm fascinated by this. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about some of the ethical hacking that we might employ on an existing company today. Uh, so, you know, we got a big organization, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, an oil and gas company downtown Calgary. How could they use services like your well, eth ethical hacking and, and security assessments, uh, security training, and, and that in general, it, it brings forward some of the vulnerabilities that their IT team might not have been able to notice otherwise. And uh, specifically, when we look at, at OT, I, I even brought some of the, these gadgets today that um, if any of these devices makes it onto your network and it's not configured in a way that that device can't pivot outside of that device or whatever it's plugged into, then you end up with a really quickly and rapidly developing compromise and it gets ugly really quickly. So with ethical hackers coming in and testing things internally or externally, 
Uh, again, with X10, we have a red team and a blue team, so we kind of have like a unique purple team where uh, we can go in and we have the fixers and the breakers. And <laughs> so when you look at something from an internal point, it brings forward a lot of things that they just weren't aware of in terms of misconfigurations and, and what's possible when someone actually gets into that network and they start to try and proliferate and move around that network and, and compromise other things. Jeff, if I'm in an organization today, I've been hacked, ransomware for example, is it too late then? <sighs> Many of the times, yes, it is, it is too late. Prevention is the best medicine. Uh, when you've already been hacked, and many times, when you have been hacked, you've already been hacked for three, four, six months. This is not something that happens right away in the attack. Usually they're in there, they're fishing around, they're pivoting, they're gaining more access. They've been in there for a long time. So yes, by the time the trigger has been pulled on that ransomware, it's gonna to be too late. And now you're in remediation mode. You're just trying to get that forensic evidence to figure out what happened, how to plug that hole, and then, and then recover from that, that, that hack. So guys, then the next question is, is if it takes that long, and I'm surprised by that, you know, I guess I watch too many movies, I see somebody go in there, hit a bunch of keys and bam, there, and they got access to everything, right? Um, but uh, if it takes that long to gather information for them to get prepared, um, obviously they're very well prepared before they hit that button and, and, and shut you down. Can we, or is there tools in place that we can use today that we catch them early? 100%. There's intrusion protection systems, there's intrusion prevention systems, so IPS, IDS, there's things like endpoint detection and response. Think of that as the 21st century antivirus, where you have a lot more control over that endpoint. So things like computers. You can control USBs, whether they have access to it, what kind of applications they can have access to, who has a, uh, access to those applications. All of these different things can provide so much more granular control than we've seen in the past. That's a really good point about the USB policies and stuff like right. that. Like it automatically stops someone from going in and you know plugging in a shark jack or something in your network. Just jacking, yeah, anything like that. Crazy. Um, really hot topic in Canada as of late is Bill C twenty six. Matt, where did it come from? Uh, it's sort of an evolution. So um, Canada has a their uh, certificate program called Cyber Secure Canada. Um, this program, um, it's, it's been promoted, but, but it's not really well known, um, mostly because it didn't have, um, it, it just wasn't required by the government. Yeah. So this new bill will put some requirements in place that uh, um, give compliance a little bit more oomph. <laughs> yeah. So businesses who want to work with the government and who want to work with each other will need to uh, become compliant and then um, it, it'll mean something, right? It, it'll tell the it'll tell the world that uh, you know we're not going to take this anymore. It'll tell the world that uh, we've done our diligence in protecting our data and hopefully turn this problem around. So my understanding of Bill C twenty six um, is is really that if you're part of a delicate or necessary infrastructure in Canada, you have to adhere to some certain guidelines or rules that the government is setting up. That be almost a sixty thousand foot view of, of really what it is, or is it more entailed than that? It's a little more specific because it's not all critical infrastructure. Um, it's utilities, uh, pipelines, transportation, finance, two different versions, uh, nuclear, and yeah. telecom. So, what amazed me, what wasn't in there was water wastewater, because I would consider that to be a fairly critical uh, infrastructure. Because if we don't have drinking water, you know. We're, we're in some trouble, but that isn't in there, but there is provisions that that can be added at a later date. So we often talk about slippery slopes being a bad thing. In this case, I think that what we're seeing is the beginning of a slippery slope that I'm happy to be going down. So I think that as we're you know, wastewater being one of them, our drinking water being another, and, mul and a multitude of other different yes. industries should eventually, and I'm guessing will eventually, have to adhere to C26. I think eventually. Um, I think like most bills of this type, uh, it, it has its teeth in it now, but I don't think it's going to really be enforced for that first year because you can't, it's, it's a carrot and a stick. You can't just leave the stick right off the hop because people are going to fight back on that. Yeah. So I think there's going to be a little uh, leeway to begin with for probably the first year or so. And then after that, compliance will definitely be mandatory and that's where we're going to see 
whichever enforcement arm decides to, to implement, they, they will start cracking down. But I also think that, you know, you, you can't wait for this to come, right? You, you have yeah. to get ahead of the curve, right? A lot of companies are already installing some of the, uh, the pieces of that. Um, you can't ignore it because it's going to be here when it gets here, really enforced. Yeah, you're way behind the curve. You asked about, you know, is it too late when, you know, the ransomware hits? Yeah, well, it's going to be the same thing. So. Yeah, exactly. And I, I got to say, you know, if it's taking three to six months for these organizations to get themselves up to speed to hack at a company and, and take them down, they have to know about Bill C26 and they're preparing for it right now. So you know, maybe that's the case where ethical hackers are in there making sure that we're not, at, we're getting ahead of the curve here. But um, ultimately, uh, I, sorry, go ahead. Um, I just want to point out that it's, um, this is new to us, like new to Canada, but not new to the United States yeah. or other countries, right? So we have a leak and we're plugging up the hole with this. Okay. Yeah. So you got TSA in the United States, you got NIS version two already out in Europe. So we are behind in comparison, but I think we should just be standing on the shoulders of giants who have already done it and not trying to recreate the wheel. That's I agree. It. That's right. So let me ask you then, why are we so behind the curve? Loaded <laughs> 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 <Little> question. <laughs> uh, to the, uh, <laughs> smaller country. Um, <laughs> our head's buried in the sand. Let me try on that one. So, um, Canadian companies invest less in their employees and less in themselves than the United States companies do. And so the adoption in the U.S. is quick. And then, you know, five years later, <laughs> Canadian companies adopted. I. I Went to university in the States I, when I came back to Canada, then, wow, I'm five years ahead of, it, of everybody, yeah, right. <laughs> right? But th this is a, um, it doesn't have to be this way. Canadians, um, Canadian companies who uh, jump on these kind of technologies, invest in their, in their company, invest in their employees, they find uh, that there's about a 40% increase in their revenue in comparison to the competitors. So really? I say, go take this, run with it, and enjoy that profit, because being able to take home an extra 30% just for yourself feels really good at the end of the year. That does sound good. And that kind of brings <laughs> us back to, well, it brings us back to what I was saying earlier. People process technology. You have to start with people. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I think we could sit here all day and talk about cyber. Um, I, I think what I'd like to do is really invite you all back to a, a, another show later on with you do a deep dive perhaps on OT or, or whatever we feel like maybe a little deeper in the BLC 26 but there's so many different facets of cyber that we as the as organizations as a country um, need to embrace and uh, I really like the way this is going so thanks so much for joining me today um, for those of you that get to golf at the Fortnite Cup today um, <laughs> yeah that, and I apologize about the dress <laughs> uh, good luck um, and for those of you that are watching, and uh, you can catch up with it on uh, fortinetcup.com. Yeah. Thank you again. Thanks, Chad. Everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for watching TSI today. I'm Chad Tomaszewski, Chief Growth Officer with Tridon Communications. Catch up with us next time when we learn more about technology and how it's changing business today.